Dieve agus Falteroy Vistach a Nelevan I saw Amergan Online. You're all very welcome to this series of Amergan Online. Uh, as you know, we had to cancel our Amergan Solstice Poetry Gathering in June of this year. We hope, um, nothing is sure, but we hope that uh, we'll be able to run the festival as normal next year. If not, we'll do it in some shape or form, thanks to the generous funding uh, which we receive. For this reading, I'm going to read uh, two poems written since the last festival. Both poems have to do with the shoreline I'm looking out at here as uh, I record this. And it's the same shoreline where Amergan came ashore in legendary times and uttered his famous incantation. Uh, the first poem is called Amergan in 2020, and it's a rather bleak poem, even though it was written uh, before the coronavirus uh, reared its ugly head, um, well, particularly in Ireland. I wrote it in January. And I suppose the, the, the bleakness was to do more with an international, ecological and political climate, a sort of right wing authoritarianism that goes with climate change uh, denial, which in many cases is driven by corporate money. Um, and I suppose the, the, the fires in the Amazon, the fires they had been in Australia, were the immediate physical drivers uh, of the poem. So I imagined what Amergan might say if he were stepping ashore in 2020. Amergan in 2020. His soul bruised. His whole self buffeted by the black winds he feels circling the earth. His senses racked beyond themselves by an acridity of smoke, an uneasiness of rising water, a blaring of loudspeakers from those who drive fires and whose ships trade widely on spreading waters. He weeps for the world he once uttered into being. He weeps for the disarticulation of his vision, for the self becomes solitary, for us and them, weeps for his am become it, for the hawk forlorn on the cliff, the salmon twisting desperately in rivers no longer familiar, weeps for sun, moon and stars calculated to an abyss. Knowing, however, no other words, he steps onto the shore once again, once again begins. Because that's all we can do really is, is keep beginning as, as I said, we hope to do with the Amergan Festival and of course it's it's not all gloom there are uh, you know I have found for my writing for myself great wonders in 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 the exploiting if you like the restrictions under which we lived and begun to look more closely at things and one beautiful morning in the middle of last summer we were so blessed with weather particularly in the early part of the pandemic i wrote a poem in irish called banu madne lelin covid morning greetings during the pandemic and of course it depend in irish it depends the word banu means both greeting and blessing um i'll read the an english translation first so that uh, you'll get the idea before i read the original Morning greetings during the pandemic. On a midsummer morning on the cliff top, I raise the binoculars ceremoniously to the sea. There, 
on a low tide rock, three seals lying like stone statues basking in the sun. In shimmering pools, a high-stepping heron dipping fastidiously into its own reflection. On the beach below, a ringed plover cushioning the four eggs I saw last night. As it was from the beginning, as it is, as it will be, I send morning greetings to them, and blessed in return. Banu Maidne Lilina Kovide Maiden Lor Haurigar Vruach na Failia, or deem the Glinni la Horum Hun the Farige. Er Harig in Yachter Tra, Tru Ron Shinkta in the Nyalava Clehe, Eid on Yrino fame. Ilinte Krik Lonrocha, Koresh Ord Hemul, a Pioca Gokareshach in a Heva fame. Rendroi, he's foam. Fado chladig sitter a clochru kera ivacha a chanok a rare. Maravi riv. Maratha fos. Maraveg. Baniam doiv. Gumadinul. Baniter may. Maybe, may we all be blessed. Uh, as far as the virus is concerned, as far as the environment, as far as the world political stage is concerned, I'm recording this on the morning of Tuesday, November 3rd, uh, which you will know by the time you see this, the result of the American presidential will be announced. I live in hope with not a little trepidation, but shachasesh in fad. Gaduktar Slan Shinner Fad, and we, may we meet together at the Amergan Poetry Gathering 2021. Slan Tamil.
Hello, I'm Paul Casey, and I hope you're keeping creative during these challenging times. I do find writing poetry to be a powerful antidote to stress and anxiety. It tends to give the mind a decent holiday, and um, it always seems to restore the spirit. I'm going to um, read three poems for you now, and just say a quick shout out to the Armageddon Poetry Festival. And a thank you very much to them, and I look forward to reading for them next year. Quiet Calf Ring us out, stretch us taut upon the grey bone frame. Scrape us down, lunellum thin, as the wide moon blade. For we are Codex and Caesar, the offspring of mechanical gods. Inflections pressed in virtual folios, we are to each cow its calf. Carry the jasmines, the saffrons of our time, calcite prophecies emblazoned in the cockled ranges, gilded in continental divides. Under a fallen Pejeng moon, white buffalo spirits pound to crush the hard harmonics of history in us down to a form of raw time. They amplify the faded the faded velleities that cling to its valley walls, as calligraphy, the word, and true consort of vellum, elegant to pen as alfalfa, is all flare and flourish in the nourished nibs' unending congress, in streams of ink song, tear-strewn tendrils fall from the gyre-eye drumhead skies, the barans and banjos, timpanis weave, interleave, our celebrations, the flint of our lives. Bear to the wildfire children, tapping Kayleys on the counter hoop, absorbed in the patience of elm, loose bound for gatherings yet to come. Flexed, each breath is an age of song deep stitched into wrinkled silence, where cockle shells pucker from under ancient sand. Out roam the runicus, quiet one. Deliver whole these few sweet heartbeats, these glimpses of humanity. Met against. These spectacles are no submarine portholes to hold back the crushing deep. My students, no forest mushrooms shining to be picked and savoured. Nor are these homeless, motionless in doorways, waiting to be recycled. The impoverished, no nuclear waste drums to shoot into the sun. Our elders, no outdated parchments to be edited and archived. Asylum seekers, no pieces of broken fruit for export jam factories. Drug addicts, are no bad dreams to be flushed as effluent to the sea. Depressives are no kettles to be to switch on or off for occasional tea. The selfish are no gods to placate or fear, to pile garlands upon. Mortgage holders, no piggy bank investments, but employers of bankers. Moon is no vanilla wafer, waiting to be devoured by ravenous corporate clouds. As an android is no social space to relax in with other androids. Art can be no social science to quantify or compartmentalize. Empathy, no commodity, no class A drug to get higher on. As working class people are no designer steps to wealthier graces. And the great oceanic metaphor patch is no recycling facility nor dump for under or overused language. And I'll end with this small poem called Alfalfa in Cursive. So that the nib stays on the page in continuous curlicue from the ear of the first A to the last A's tail in one fluid symbol of never-ending conjoined curves I say, I write, alfalfa. And so that I may jib and tack 
through the gusting of language, without pause, muscles of the hand flowing in obeisance to the electric infinity of sound shapes, I say and write, alfalfa, 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 alfalfa.